Hello and welcome to my video today. I mean, the first of two videos. The first one being my look back at patch 12.5 and Pro Play. Um, LPL just finished up with Pro Play on Saturday. They were doing the 12.5 patch. The LCS went to the 12.6 patch. So that means the LCK and um, LEC also played on 12.5 during the playoffs. So there were a lot of matchups to go over. If you haven't catched one of these videos before that I've done, um, I look back and I you know, make note of the top matchups that occurred most often. And if there were 10 matchups, I would break it down based on how it looks at a plat level and challenger level and solo queue. Just to, you know, it's all within a vacuum. Obviously, there's a ton of variables that play into why a uh, matchup goes the way it does. What junglers there are, what mid laners there are, what team it is, what player it is. I mean, there's countless things. Um, but it is interesting to look over an aggregate to see how matchups might fare. Now, when it comes to top lane um, specifically, we have a situation where um, there aren't any matchups that occur more than 10 times. And this happens often. I feel like all of the patches have been this way. There might be a couple exceptions, but most cases, this is how it goes. Um, there are a ton of matchups that occurred five times I did not put on here. A lot of Camille. Um, Camille was very common. It was a common champion picked, but not often into certain matchups. Um, the three most common, Gragas versus Jace. Gragas being the tank answer to Jace. If someone first picked Jace in the first rotation or 4-5, um, Gragas oftentimes was, was an, a, a counter to eliminate the Jace um, impact. Aurelia versus Nar. Um, we saw that twice in the LPL finals, which actually boosted it up this list. It wouldn't have been on there otherwise. Um, you know, skill matchup for Aurelia. Aurelia was a common uh, champion picked for those in um, the LPL and LCK. Um, and then we have Scion Jace, which is the same thing as Gragas, just on steroids. Um, Scion's obviously stronger than Gragas. Uh, stronger than Gragas. Um, being played into Jace. Um, we also saw a lot of Orn. We saw a lot of uh, male fight against Jace. A lot of people wanted to eliminate the Jace impact. Same thing as Graves. People wanted to eliminate the Graves impact. And we saw a lot of Camille into everything. Um, everything to some degree. Camille was a counter for a lot of people. Um, for split lane, you know, impact. Um, but that's it for the top lane. And now on to the jungle. Okay, now for the jungle, um, we have matchups to go over. So, um, very common with jungle and bot that we have um, a clear meta forming. I did not write it down here, and one second. So, um, gotta make sure I'm on the screen here. So, there have been six, there are 16 junglers picked during 12.5. 31 top laners picked during 12.5. Um, clearly meta formed. We have uh, Lee Sin, Viego, Hecarim, Volley Bear, Trundle. Um, those were the champions most often picked. Um, Lee Sin having a strong win rate against Viego and Volley Bear. Um, no matter what, Lee Sin was either first picked or banned, and those were the answers. I mean, Lee Sin having a strong win rate against both um, Viego and Volley Bear being. Um, uh, better for solo queue and that makes sense Lee Sin takes a lot more um, You know coordination with your team to know who to kick and be like, okay, everybody we're on the same page I'm kicking this person out place things like that. Lee Sin is a high, you know, see skill ceiling champion where um, You need to really I mean a, a player at a pro level is gonna play it a hell of a lot better than a player in solo queue um, If Lee Sin was banned and people pick Viego, Hecarim was a common counter um, Hecarim Having a strong win rate, 58% against the Viego. Um, Viego having a better win rate in solo queue. If somebody went um, Volley Bear first pick, people would say, okay, well, we're going to pick the Viego into the Volley Bear. Viego, strong win rate, 64%. And um, Volley Bear has a better win rate in the lower levels, Viego in the higher levels of solo queue. And then if Viego and Lee Sin are banned, we have Volley Bear first picked, Trundle being a counter. Trundle. Seven out of ten games, Trundle versus Volley Bear. Trundle comes out on top. Volley Bear, stronger win rate in solo queue. Trundle is not a carry champion, and you need to be able to carry in solo queue. And um, obviously, a Trundle's not going to do that. It's going to be a tank. Um, 
So that was those are the most common matchups in the jungle. I mean, clearly, and I mean, this is what's interesting. You see, if Lee Sin's banned and Pitone picks Viego, you go Hecarim. If Viego's banned and Lee Sin are banned, and you go Volley, I mean, if um, Lee Sin's banned, they go Volley Bear, you pick Viego. If Lee Sin and um, Viego are banned and you go Volley Bear, being the third option, Trundle is the counter. So clearly, that is what formed during 12.5 for the meta. Now on to the mid lane. Okay, now on to uh, the mid lane. Mid lane, similar to top lane, except that the meta is clearly smaller, 21 champions. And we saw it change over time, especially in the LPL, um, as a great example, because obviously they're fresh in my mind, fresh in our minds, because they played 12.5 until this weekend. Um, clearly, Ari dropped out of the meta. And um, LeBlanc versus Ari. LeBlanc was a really strong counter against Ari. 62% um, win rate. And then they would split in solo queue. Ari at the lower levels. LeBlanc at the higher levels. Makes sense. Ari being a champion that, I mean, is, is really good in low elo. Um, in mid-tier elo. But in the high levels of elo, LeBlanc, stronger champion. Um, we're seeing it banned in the LCS in 12.6. We see it saw it banned in other regions. It makes sense. Um, Vex being a counter to LeBlanc, obviously I don't have those stats here because it didn't happen more than 10 times. It wasn't going to, you know, go off of eight matchups and say this is how a matchup usually goes. Um, but to form a meta, we did see, okay, LeBlanc is clearly being picked into Ari or Vex and vice versa. Um, and then if the teams decided, okay, we want to go to control mages, Rise was a very common pick. Rise being the way it is, Victor being a common counter because Victor control mage makes sense better than Oriana and Syndra right now. Um, but if teams wanted to match the roaming of the rise, they picked a Galio into it. Silas falling out of the meta in that regard. Silas was picked during this patch, but not as strong of a champion as Galio in people's eyes. We saw towards the end, Galio wasn't even really matching rise overall. And some people started even going Vex. I saw Vex in the LCS in 12.6 yesterday. Um, but I mean, cause really Vex went three and one on Saturday. If you missed my LPL spring finals, um, roundup, Vex was a high prio champion that got three wins. I mean, it was, it was a, it was a clear top tier pick. It was outplaying the TFs and it was outplaying Galio. So, um, I mean, this is the thing, like that's, that's kind of how it is right now. It's a rise meta. Um, people are going tank rise cause rise has not been really played with much i don't remember if 12.7 or 12.8 has them being nerfed um we will get to that during the week obviously like i said in friday's road to msi video i will get to a 12.7 and 12.8 video after the lcs is done today we will know exactly what teams are in and then i can look and be like okay well especially with like weird champions like nico like i keep referencing nico with faker but it was years ago that faker used nico and became a really good Nico player that we all were like, okay, this guy's legit on this champion. Um, but I don't know if uh, a guy from, I mean, heck, I don't know, uh, the TCL played Nico two years ago. I don't know that, and that's the sort of information I have to look for. Um, but speaking of mid laners, Nico might be in the mid meta, who knows, maybe top. Um, but nevertheless, uh, on to bot lane. Okay, now at the bot lane. We are seeing something we've seen before. Um, there are 17 champions in bot lane used, which is a nice, I mean, change. Um, I mean, we're seeing a lot more pizzazz in the bot lane. Um, however, old, you know, matchups never leave, like Aphelios Jinx. In the beginning of 12.5, as people were only testing out the Zaya, Aphelios Jinx was still the handshake. And in the end, 34 times was it was played um, better than the 80 to 90 times we saw earlier in the split on some patches um, however um, you will notice Aphelios extremely strong on this patch against Jinx and Zaya 50 65 I mean uh, 65 and 60 percent win rates Aphelios was a must first pick or ban during 12.5 um, I don't know why he was let by as much as he was when these win rates were the way they were I have a feeling it's because Aphelios was losing in solo queue, but in the end, Aphelios was winning the games that mattered and at the highest level of play. So the Aphelioses were doing very, very good work. The AD carries were more comfortable on Aphelios than Jinx and Zaya. Um, when the Aphelios was banned and people picked Jinx, they picked Zaya into it. 
Zaya having a 53% win rate against a champion. Um, Zaya came into the meta and really, I mean, obviously 30 times against the Felios, Zaya became a third pick. Third prio um, AD carry. Zeri becoming the fourth. Um, Zeri being here, strong win rate against Jinx. Jinx just fell out of meta. Jinx is not good anymore. Um, you know, you saw it pop off with Danny's Pentakill, whatever. Um, I mean, it might be strong in the LCS, but we saw in the LPL, which played a lot more games than anyone else did on 12.5, that Jinx fell through the cracks, was not a strong carry versus the likes of Aphelios, Zaya, and Zeri. Um, that's just how it is. But even in the LEC and LCK, it's just, I mean, we might have a warped idea of what looks good. Um, the thing is, if, else, if Jinx does not get um, excited, she is pretty much useless from what it looks like to me. Um, I mean, we'll see what 12.6 holds. Obviously, it's a smaller, um, a smaller sample size, but I believe there will be things that happen at least 10 times, especially in bot and jungle, because obviously there's more matchups to go over um but i mean we'll see how it changed maybe in the lcs in 12.6 i mean heck maybe um jinx has a strong win rate after you know the changing of the patch and the meta may be shifting a little bit or it's just the lcs um but so uh that is a bot lane recap now finally on to support okay now for the last part of this video we have support um, clearly Nautilus, 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 Nautilus. It was all about Nautilus. Um, what could you play into Nautilus? And, um, I mean, that's what it was. I mean, cause people would pick him on the first rotation three, um, you know, the first three picks and this is what ended up happening. So, um, into it, people would pick Leona oftentimes, Leona having a strong win rate. And as did Renata, Renata, very strong seven out of 10 times, Renata versus Nautilus went in Renata's favor. Renata wins in solo queue at the mid-tier and high-tier levels as well. Makes sense. Renata's a really strong champion, getting banned often. Um, otherwise, she would be picked in the first rotation, and you have to get kind of frisky with your counters. Um, but if you if you ban her, people go Nautilus, and then it's a pick of what you want to go into it. Tom Kench, we've seen that time and time again, this um, split. Nautilus, slight win rate, 6 out of 11 times did it win. Same thing with Nautilus and Rakan. Um, Rakan being picked more often because Zaya is being picked, obviously not necessarily into each other. But people are saying, oh shoot, I don't want to allow Zaya Rakan. So the Aphelios may take a Rakan, for example, and the Zaya says, well, then we're going to take Nautilus into it. And things like that would occur. Um, Nautilus, strong, uh, I mean, barely beating um, the opposition in solo queue, 50 50 win rates, 51 draw, 51. Um, I mean, it's a toss up in the bot lane as it comes to support. Um, I mean, it's not getting too crazy down there. It's, it's like I just said, it's Nautilus. That's, that's what it's built around. Just like, um, Aphelios is what it's built around in bot mid. It was Ari at the beginning and then it became rise as the patch went along jungle, Lee Sin and Viego, um, and their counters. And then top lane, it's whatever you want to play into Jace, um, tank wise. And, um, Camille, as like I said, there was no Camille listed, but a lot of Camille occurred in the patch just against a ton of different champions, so it didn't happen often, individual matchups. Um, if you like this video, comment down below your opinions on the patch. What do you think of it? Uh, I mean, do you think it was, I mean, I mean, this happened a while ago if you're an LCS fan, but nevertheless, LPL just ended. That's the third time I've said that this video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this. Um, like the video. I'm going to have a 12.6 video up early this week. Um, a 12.7 breakdown and a 12.8 breakdown to see what champions may be, you know, appearing in MSI that we haven't seen in a while and what teams are going to get buffed and nerfed by those, you know, changes. So that's that. Uh, stay tuned later today. I will have my League of Legends roundup for EG 100 Thieves LCS finals. And um, thank you for watching.